Yep. Was that a yes or a wait? It was a wait. Uh, it was a yes. Excellent. All right. I present, yes, we present Ben Savage about learning to sight read. Hi. <laughs> okay, so this is a similar journey to the, uh, the talk beforehand. Uh, this is largely how I learned how to use a whole bunch of uh, lily pond stuff and uh, some interesting PHP stuff, and mostly how I do read better than I could before. Uh, so, who am I? I'm Ben. Uh, I am a sysadmin at Deakin University, although I'm not actually really presenting them at the moment, I'm representing them. Uh, and I have a sort of interesting his, uh, history with music. So when I was a, a little tyke, I had, I think, one piano lesson when I was about five and decided that just completely wasn't for me. Uh, then during uh, you know, school, we had all our music lessons, so that's where I learned the sort of basics of music. Uh, we didn't really do any reading of music, they just taught us what notes were, that sort of stuff. Uh, when I was a teenager, I played the euphonium for a term, uh, also decided that wasn't really for me. Uh, and then I sort of had this uh, renaissance a couple of years ago, and apparently my clicker isn't working. Ah, yes, uh, so I, I got a, a keyboard for one of my birthdays and just sort of learned how to play piano from that uh, with my very basic uh, musical knowledge. I managed to sort of brute force my way through a whole bunch of pieces and uh, got very good at remembering things, which is important because that's going to come up. Uh, and since then, I've sort of uh, uh, fallen in love with musical instruments. There's a portion of my collection. Um, the important thing to know is there are two cellos there. Uh, a whole bunch of ukuleles, congos, a thunder drum, a clarinet that I'm learning. Uh, we have a clarinetist. Uh, also, also a kalimba, I don't think I'm listening, and uh, one of my other loves, the ocarina, or five thereof. Uh, and the keen eyed people there will notice that they're all sitting on top of a grand piano, which is in my bedroom. Just, uh, just under a quarter of the floor space, and for scale, there's a Korg tiny piano on top of it. Uh, because it's adorable. Um, so, what have I actually done? Well, I'm not very good at sight reading music. Uh, this has been a problem for a lot of reasons, we'll get onto that. Um, so, I decided what I needed was a way to generate some random music so that I could learn how to sight read. Uh, most people would just use practice books or something like that, but there are a couple of problems with that. Um, so, for one thing, like I said, I, I've got a pretty good memory for music these days, and once I've played something through once or twice, all of a sudden I don't need to read the music anymore, which is a problem when you're trying to learn how to read music. Uh, so, you know, we, you get all these very repetitive exercises where you'll go up and down the scales, all that sort of thing, but when, once you've played through it twice, uh, that's all you ever really need, and then I stop paying attention to the music because I don't need it anymore. Uh, other problems is all of these exercises tend to have reasonably obvious patterns, so you'll just be going one, three, four, three, one, two, three, four, etc., with your fingers. And once you've noticed that pattern, bingo, you don't need to look at the music anymore. Uh, playing by ear. This is a fun problem. None of my music teachers are allowed to play me anything anymore because uh, if they play me the music, I don't need the music anymore. So my cello teacher outright refuses to play me anything, and I'm having to coach my piano teacher not to play me anything. Because as soon as they do, uh, we're done. Um, so just in case you haven't been classically trained with an instrument, this is the sort of uh, cello practice you'll get. Uh, you can probably notice that there are quite a few patterns in there. Uh, it, it's fairly simple. It's, um, it's fun, and when I started seeing these things, I started thinking, hey, I reckon I could automate this. This is uh, an even more insane degree of that, where you have the same pattern, uh, the same four patterns, just over and over, starting at, I think it's a C5 and uh, an E5 and going down to a C2 on your cello. So you just start at the very top and do the same thing over and over, all the way down. Uh, admittedly, this one is actually more for you know, getting your agility up than actually learning the music. Um, Another problem is these practice books are reasonably expensive. That, that's not a huge problem for me, but it is for a lot of people. 
a practice book can run you anything from, you know, like 20 to $50, depending on uh, what level you're at and, uh, you know, how many exercises there are and how prestigious the author is. Um, there's this great site, IMSLP, uh, which I can't remember the, the International Music Library, I think it is, um, which has just pretty much every public domain uh, classical music piece uh, that there is, the ones that still exist at least and have copies around. So if, if you can think of a classical piece of music, odds are the full score is available on IMSLP. So that's pretty handy for those two exercise books, which uh, these are both from IMSLP. Um, the other thing is, you, I, I find when I, when I have to practice, it'll, it'll just like come to me, oh, I feel like playing. And that's problematic if you're somewhere... At, like if you can't be bothered getting your books out or if you've just packed them all up or whatever. Um, and also, I, I'm sort of, uh, what with IMSLP, I'm inclined to want to use things like tablets and, uh, and computers instead of having to carry these books around. So um, I, I wanted whatever I was going to write to work on anything I had just on me at the time. So my phone, for instance. Uh, it's broken again. Let's see if we can find where we were. I love that grand piano. Ah, and of course, I, I wanted to actually learn music theory while I was learning to sight read, which it turns out uh, it tends to happen when you're trying to automate an entire musical process. Uh, and also how to automate the whole thing. Like I said, I saw these huge patterns there and I thought, oh, I can do that. Uh, or rather, I can make something do that. I tend to abide by the principle of uh, if uh, I, I should only have to do something once. Uh, you should never have to reuse code. You should never have to. Uh, you should never have to write something down more than once. If you have a whole bunch of data, you shouldn't have to manually click and drag it, or copy it, or paste it. You should. You should code that. Um, so let's let's see if my live demo works, uh, which would help if the pointer did. Self signed certificates. They run the modern world, and it's gone to the wrong place. Nice. So here is our standard interface. Here you can pick any key, even the ones that don't actually exist, uh, which is quite interesting. Uh, you can also pick almost any scale. So how many of these did people actually know? Uh, so I certainly knew the major, minor, harmonic, minor, chromatic, pentatonic scales. I didn't know about the whole tone, the octatonic, or the uh, Ravel scale. Uh, there's also another one, the mystic scale, that I need to actually put in. So uh, just since everyone's probably familiar with it, let's look at the C major scale. You can also put in pretty much any time signature. Uh, I want to make it do more than that, but I mean, <laughs> that's a future project, I think. Uh, and then there are these sort of practice modes that um, I, I started out just wanting to learn, well, get, get better at recognizing which notes were where. So I just had this sort of random, pick a random note, put it up, and then I could you know, print it off or just you know, say C, E, F, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this is a sort of later edition, so I started off having a treble and a bass clef because that's what you use piano, uh, on a piano, and that's what I was primarily trying to learn how to play. Uh, but then I realized, hey, I play a cello now, and a whole bunch of cello music is in the tenor clef. And if you're a viola player, you might be using the alto clef. Uh, there are also a whole bunch of other clefs, but I haven't put them in yet because um, I'm lazy. Uh, and one of the other sort of cool little features that uh, Lily Pond has is the ability to actually put the note names in the note heads, which is pretty cute. So uh, we'll, we'll tick that as well, so that I don't look like a fool in a second. And so it goes away, and since my resolution isn't proper, it's going to put it in the wrong place. Uh, and so here we have some just random notes. Uh, this is what I started with so that I could just try to pick the notes faster and faster. But then I realized that this sounds absolutely horrid when you try to uh, play it on a piano or something like that, as we'll soon discover. Except apparently we won't. Let's uh, 
Let's swap this around, shall we? Uh, let's use the local version. That actually works. Hmm? Why isn't that? Oh, HTTPS. Uh, I think I left those pretty much as I did, didn't I? Ah, yeah. oh, this is going to show us how to do scales. So there you go, it's generated a two octave C major scale right there. That sounds fine, I wanted to show off how horrible random scales sound. So that, that's kind of dull. Um, um, not yet. <laughs> but I'm going to put in a mod. Uh, so, so I found that that was obviously really dull, repetitive, and didn't actually help me learn all that much. So uh, just more as a testing thing than anything else, I gave it the ability to generate full scales, uh, which is kind of... Interesting when you look at some of the other slightly crazier scales. Uh, so this is fairly recognizable for a whole bunch of... Um, is it loud enough? Sort of a late Romantic era French composer there, uh, coming up with his own crazy scales. Um, so you know that's that's a good testing thing, and to get yourself familiar with each of the various scales. Obviously, you might be playing a D scale, a D sharp, etc. Um, let's get to the major. So then I started thinking about what it really is to sight read. Not really as deep a philosophical question as it sounds there. Um, and it's, it's more about being able to play the music than just to be able to recognize it. So I came up with a couple of little other exercises that help with that. Uh, let's just make this something nice, like a th third. So in this mode, it just sort of works around the scale. Uh, let's make it generate a bit more as well. I've called it wandering because it just sort of wanders around the scale. So your interval is always going to be a second. So you're always playing the next note in the scale. So for piano, more than anything else, this sort of helps to get you used to it, to the fingering. So um, normally when you're playing a scale, you'll just go all the way up and then go all the way back. This is more about getting used to, you know, maybe stopping halfway through the scale and then going back down, all, all that sort of crazy magic. Um, each of these have their own little crazy options. So for this one, the treble clef, uh, the bass clef is uh, a third off from the um, treble clef, so that when you're playing it, you're not necessarily playing the same thing in both hands, but it won't necessarily sound horrible because you can pick what interval you're going to play in, and a third is is relatively pleasing. Um, then, so so that gets you used to sort of playing sort of progressions of notes. Uh, there's this other mode which is uh, which gives you clusters of notes. And so the important thing here, well, these are coming out random both sides, um, this is more about learning where to put your fingers. So just because uh, in the wandering mode, you always know sort of which finger you're going to use next. But this cluster mode, it might do a big jump. So you need to sort of read ahead to figure out where the best place to put your hand is. Uh, and yeah, that, that seemed like a good idea. Uh, admittedly, I spend more time developing this than I do using it, so <laughs> it could do with some testing if anyone wants to learn how to sight read music. Uh, this next one is one that I'm kind of excited about just because it's, it's jazzy, uh, and it'll give you lots of chords. And these are, these are completely random chords. Again, this is sort of geared towards the piano, um, where you just need to know where to put all your fingers at once rather than being able to sort of improvise with the clusters and you know you're probably going to have to lift your hand off and move it, whereas with the clusters, you know, you, 
you have some wiggle room there. Um, these are all pretty jazzy chords there. Um, but the cool thing about this is you can change a lot of these parameters. So you can't really play this on a cello, and I quite like the cello. Um, so what you can do is you can tell it what the maximum and minimum size of an interval is. So with an interval, you can't really play a second on a, uh, on a cello just because that pretty much has to be on the same string or you have to be able to stretch really far. And I have small hands, so that doesn't work. So a minimum interval here is going to be a third, which you can comfortably play on a cello. Um, similarly, you can sort of play four notes on a cello, but you, you end up just moving your bow across all the strings. So instead, we'll play double stops, which are just chords with two notes. Uh, and let's play it in the uh, tenor clef, which is lots of fun on a cello. So here we have a whole bunch of crazy double stops for you to play. Um, for instance, what I've been learning at the moment to get my hand in with double stops is Yankee Doodle. But we hit all of those earlier problems of I've memorized it, I know how it sounds, it, it's not helpful for me anymore because I, I don't have to look at the music. But this, every time I refresh, I'm going to get a completely new set of music. So I can never stop paying attention to the music. And I know that there aren't going to be any recognizable patterns as such. Uh, so I won't just be able to stop paying attention and, and play by how I think it's going to go, which I do constantly to the uh, uh, annoyance of all of my teachers. That is feasibly live. Apparently the OGG stuff doesn't work, but uh, the rest of it does. Feel free to jump on there. Uh, so the underlying technology is LilyPond, and LilyPond does all of your magical engraving. So that's what's coming up with all of these images. Um, and that's all entirely text-based, which to me says easy to automate. Um, and a bonus is it can create the MIDI and the OGG files, so you can uh, listen to it after on, uh, later on and verify that you're actually playing it correctly. Uh, so we'll look at what LilyPond actually looks like. Uh, so for instance, this is move this over. This is the accompanying track to something I'm learning on the cello. And uh, as you can see, it's just straight text with you know some sort of interesting syntaxes. So using square brackets for chords, uh, setting your octave with uh, a series of apostrophes and commas and your note length with, uh, uh, with a number effectively, which is just so easy to automate the whole thing. Uh, and you engrave it, and it looks really cool. And then it will also create MIDI files for you, just automatically. Um, so normally you do all of this through text, uh, but I'm using uh, Fris uh, what is it, Frescobaldi for everything. So you could do it all in VI if you wanted it in the terminal or, or whatever you want. And just in general, I've found it more intuitive than um, the various forms that you'd use to click where you want to put your note. Because surprise, surprise, I can't just do that quickly because I'm terrible at reading music. But I can type it really quickly. Um, so code's all PHP. Uh, it works pretty much entirely through just generating scales. It generates them itself. I haven't actually hard coded the scales as such. I've just given it the intervals for the scales. So I haven't put in a D major is, you know, a D, an E, an F sharp, etc. I just go, okay, it's a second, a second, a second, etc. Uh, and then it creates the scores based on a loose approximation of what an interval is. In this case, it's not a true interval. It's just the interval between you know two index positions in an array. Uh, so your second is just saying, OK, it's the next position in the array. A third is the next one after that, when in reality, the, the intervals are actually going to be like a second and then a third, um, or, or, or a minor third. Um, one of the interesting things while I was doing this is that it turns out you can't just sort an array of musical notes because your octave starts on a C, not an A. So when you sort your array, it's going to go, oh, OK, A's the first note. And then all of your music looks terrible because you'll go, OK, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, 
C, D, and it'll just jump all over the scale. So that was really fun, and I got around that really boringly. Um, but what we can look at, uh, where am I? Is a little bit of the code there. So this is all incredibly messy and uncommented, you'll notice, because that's how real code is right. Um, so all of the scales are just given by their intervals. Uh, then it goes through and pretty much decides whether a note should be a sharp or a flat based on those intervals and based on whether it already knows that there are flats because a scale can't have a sharp and a flat in it, or at least your, your key signature can't have a sharp and a flat in it. Uh, so it, it works all that stuff out and just decides on its own which note is going to go where, whether it's going to call something a flat or a sharp uh, or a natural, which is pretty easy, uh, really, when you look at it all. Uh, and I just like this because it tells you all of these things that don't exist. So a C-sharp minor isn't an actual key signature because uh, it's trying to put an F-sharp in with a bunch of flats, which just doesn't work. Uh, so yeah, I, I invented a bunch of key signatures there. You can still put them in, uh, <laughs> and it'll still work on that scale. So uh, what did I say? C-sharp minor? Uh, C-flat minor? Yeah. So if I find this, I can still put in. If for some crazy reason you want to, that's what a C-flat minor looks like. <laughs> so I'm noticing there are three double flats. <laughs> Fun stuff. <laughs> I probably won't be playing that one anytime soon. <laughs> Well, we can give it a go. That's the magic of Lily Pond. Oh, isn't that Let, let's listen to it as an actual scale. <laughs> ah, here we go. C flat gets sorted, obviously, before a C for some reason. <laughs> Where's the drop going to be? There we go. <laughs> so my sorting is imperfect there. <laughs> um, oops, that's the wrong thing. Um, yeah, so, uh, so as a part of this, particularly in the sort of clusters area and, and such, I've got this... Uh, no, actually, I'll get to that in a second. What's this? starts working. So, so it has a couple of issues at the moment in that you can't actually deviate from your scale, so if you want to play a C major scale you can't put a sharp or a flat in there just because I'm not very good at programming. Uh, and it doesn't actually scale all that well because it turns out Lily Pond is relatively CPU intensive, so if you all jump on right now and try to generate something you'd probably crash my server. Feel free to. Uh, but, you know, it only takes a couple of seconds, so I figure you're probably not going to overload it in the next couple of weeks. Uh, so, I've got some sort of future things that I want to put in because it's not good enough yet. Um, I want it to be able to recognise, or I want you to be able to put in what instrument you're playing and for it to figure out what the, uh, what the uh, abilities of that instrument are. So like I was saying before with a cello, you can't play a second and you can't play beyond, well you can't play below a C2 for instance, so it's no good if that comes up in a piece of music you're trying to read. Um, so I want to put in a whole bunch of stuff like that, uh, which is getting there. And I'd also like you to be able to, like I said with the uh, automation, I'd like you to be able to put in some patterns and for it to just riff on that. Uh, and it's got a, a very sort of basic thing there where you just create an array of intervals and it'll it'll just go on that but I want you to be able to give it something a bit more interesting and also for you to be able to use flats and sharps because that might come in handy as some sort of uh, instrumentation. Uh, if you have any questions I'd love to hear them and feel free to jump on there and start generating music. Whoop. So any questions? Mike. Thank <laughs> you. Just lose mine. Yep. Uh, Oh, well, just uh, I 
I don't know if this is a very good question, really, but um, this is very good for sort of random uh, generation. But, like, when you're really learning to sight-read, is not a large part of it kind of actually understanding the patterns in the type of music that you're reading and that, uh, <laughs> being able to kind of um, read ahead and, and sort of see a block of music mm. and based on the scale and the style and th that you're doing, mm. sort of be able to read that without having to read each individual note. That is very true. So like I said, this started with just a, I need a bunch of random notes so that I can recognise them. I, I, I started, you know, transcribing pieces and just writing the note names, but I found that was really annoying uh, because, you know, I could easily recognise when there's, you know, going to be a D coming after a C and I didn't want that. I wanted to be able to look at a note and say, oh, that's a C rather than look at a note and say that's a C, oh, the next one's a D, because it's just a little bit lower than it. But with that in mind, that's why I created some of those other little practice regimens, like the cluster one right. is, is for that very purpose of being able to read ahead and see yeah. what the next few notes are. But I imagine you could take that further, perhaps. Yes, that is uh, a, a, a more distant goal, is to get it to create actual pieces in, in, in types of music. So, for instance, piano dubstep is something I'd like to hear uh, <laughs> and I'd like it to be able to generate. And uh, similarly, you know, something that's really formulaic, like a toccata, you could probably start generating that them fairly really simply. Because, you know, once you've studied your counterpoint, well, you just do that yeah. with your bass. And, and one other comment, um, this is going back more than 10 years now, but um, there used to be the software, there were several packages. I know mm. one of them was called Band in a Box. Yeah. And <laughs> other ones, and they would generate music for you. I, I, yeah. To be honest, I forget details now, but yeah. I just wondered whether you were aware of those. Yeah, so one of my vague inspirations for this is this uh, incredible AI called uh, Emmy. Uh, it has a surname, but I can't remember what it is. And so Emmy is this AI that a guy created to look at a whole bunch of composers' music and then compose music in their style. So um, you can find a, a Vivaldi piece that's written by this AI that sounds like a Vivaldi piece, and you would instantly recognize it and go, that is just Vivaldi. So um, I won't be creating any crazy AI like that, but I certainly would like to get it just a bit closer to looking like actual music. All right, so we've hit the end of that time slot, so thank you very much, Ben. That was um, very insightful. So thank you very much for that. <laughs> thank you. I'm here all week. I have a daughter who's learning piano, and I think she would uh, benefit from some of this stuff. Uh, Definitely. More of the advanced work. So that's get her cool. onto it. That, 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 that is another thing I'd like to get in, is for it to be able to sort of start suggesting fingering for stuff. But uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Cool. Thanks. So while uh, Deb's getting set up with her laptop, I'll just... Um, give a gentle... or just a reminder that we've got um, a lightning talk demo... Uh, if anyone's got um, pieces they've written, they want to perform, they want to play recorded work that they've done or give a lightning talk about something, see me sometime. So we'll get started as soon as Deb's uh, got her stuff sorted out.